Spring Training 2017, Jim along with Corey Probus, broadcast voice of the Minnesota Twins. Annual visit, enjoy and get together, uh, Corey, and a lot of fun things to talk about, including a, a pretty nice start to spring training for the Twins. Yeah, Jim, great to be back with you again. As you said, our sixth uh, visit down here at Fort Myers, and uh, the sun looks good on you, bud. It, it really shows well. <laughs> But it's always great to chat with you, and yeah, I really, I think so far so good down here, but I don't get too caught up in wins and losses, as I was saying earlier, that, uh, you know, I think it was last spring where the Twins won maybe their last eight mm -hmm. games down here, and then they start the season, and you're 0-9. But yeah, overall, I think it's been a good camp. Starting pitching created so much conversation because we had a lot of issues last year, a lot of injuries and so forth. How are you seeing the starting rotation come together? And let's comment about who might be the number five pitcher. That's gotten kind of interesting. Yeah, Irvin Santana, he's going to start opening day. No no shock there. Uh, he, he earned it, and he was terrific last year. Uh, so Irvin's going to be there. Phil Hughes, we'll see how he responds after a lost season again with, uh, with a couple of injuries, the broken bone in his leg. But then uh, thoracic outlet syndrome is what ended his season. He had a part of his rib taken out near his right shoulder. So he's hoping that increased blood flow is going to help his velocity kind of bounce back to what it was in that remarkable 2014 season. Uh, it, it's a big year for Kyle Gibson. I, I think it's, I don't know if it's make or break year, but I think it's at the point now where he's 29, getting close to 30 years old, like, all right, what do you have? Who are you? And I think this is a big year for him, and he knows that. So with that in mind, he changed his off-season program. He had a whole new off-season uh, conditioning program kind of a new throwing style, if you will. Uh, it's very mechanical. I think you need like an MIT degree to basically describe and kind of define what it is, but it works for him. And the results have been really good uh, down here. Uh, so you have those three guys, Hector Santiago finished really strong. His September was good. He'll be one lefty. Now, as for that number five, there may be a case where the Twins have two lefties in the rotation. At Alberto Mejia has been great. Uh, he came over from the Giants in the Nunez trade late July of last year. He's looked really, really good. And there's more competition now, Jim, because of the injury to Trevor May. And I think all signs pointed to him being the number five. But he'll need uh, Tommy John surgery. His season is over. So it's Mejia, it's Duffy, it's Barrios, and maybe a few other guys really fighting for the number five. Speaking of Barrios, and just in general, World Baseball uh, Classic that's going on, and we've got a number of Twins players who played deep into that, some still going as we do the interview. How might that impact those players in making the team or getting started with the squad? I think it hurts a guy like Kenny Vargas uh, at first base because Bianco Park has been so good. Uh, you know, Park has been great to back up Joe at first base. Now, Bianco is not on the roster anymore, but you can still... You can manipulate that a little bit. You can see Trevor May going to the 60-day DL. That would open up a 40-man spot. Same for Glenn Perkins. I won't be shocked if that happens as well. So you can find a 40-man spot here for Bianco Park, but you know he has made up for it. Uh, you know it, it's a shame if it plays out that way because Kenny wanted to go play for his country, and I think it's 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 not the right approach to say, boy, he made a mistake. He wanted to go play for his country in a global event that Major League Baseball is endorsing and promoting. Uh, but he hasn't really received that many at-bats for Team Puerto Rico either, which has maybe hurt his cause. Uh, Jose Barrios, I still think there may be a little bit of time for him to make a push for the number five, but still, it's hard to, it's hard to you know pick anybody but Mejia, although Duffy was really good yesterday as well. Uh, so I think he's behind those guys. I, I wouldn't be shocked if Barrios starts at AAA, but... For Kenny Vargas, who does have that rare fourth option, I think it's hurt him the most uh, not being here with the big league club. Yeah, and we'll see with Barrios. Uh, possibly he could see some relief action in the championship of the uh, WBC. We don't know yet. Starting lineup seems to be pretty much set around the field as it was kind of coming into spring training. Uh, but what about those backup positions? What's your read right now on backup infield, outfield positions? I think the backup catcher right now is going to be Chris Jimenez, a uh, non-roster player, but I think he's outperformed John Ryan Murphy to be the backup to, to, to Jason Castro. And, and Jimenez, a right-handed batter, Castro, left-handed batter, and Jimenez hits left-handed pitching pretty well. Um, so I, th I think he's got a leg up in that race. I, I think there's a place for Danny Santana on this team. He's out of options, as is Robbie Grossman, who led the team in on-base percentage last year. But Danny's more versatile. Danny can play some infield, play some outfield. He steals bases. He'll get caught, but he's not afraid to run. Switch hitter. Robbie's a switch hitter, but better from the right side. But Grossman, if it comes down to those two guys for one spot, I think Santana gives you more. 
He's just more versatile than, than, than Robbie is. But you can see a case where both Danny and Robbie are on the team. If Jimenez is your backup catcher, if Young Ho Park's your backup first baseman, and then that leaves you with one more spot. Is that Eduardo Escobar? Is that Eddie Adrianza? Uh, that, that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out over these next few weeks. A lot of good uh, infield options this year. Bullpen, uh, some of the slots are for sure. Some are a little bit open. Your look at the bullpen, maybe seven? I have seven uh, that, that will leave camp, but I have four locks, Jim, as we sit here right now. I, I have Brandon Kinsler is going to close. Ryan Presley is going to be a setup man. Matt Belisle is going to be a setup man. I, I, I have Taylor Rogers on the team, uh, one lefty. He was really good last year. Now, Ryan O'Rourke uh, was put on the disabled list, uh, so he is uh, he, he will open the season on the DL, I guess is the best way to say it, with, uh, with an arm injury. I don't believe it was too severe, but I had him kind of in the mix to grab one of those last three spots. If he's out of the mix, does that give Craig Breslow a chance? Does that move Buddy Bo Shears up? Uh, a guy like JT Shagwa, where does he kind of fall in here? And some of the non-roster guys, uh, you know, uh, Ryan Vogelsong or Nick Tepish, even Justin Haley, a Rule 5 guy, he has to be on the team, otherwise the Twins have to sell him back with some cash to the Red Sox. So that bullpen to me is, is there are three spots and maybe seven, eight guys all competing to grab those last three. Before we take a, a break on this segment, Corey, what would the storylines be of this spring training so far for the Twins? I don't think it has to do much with the outfield personnel. I think it's more about the guys in the front office. I, I think having Derek Falvey and Thad Levine and his group kind of look at things for the first time and, and changes they want to make, I think that to me is the number one storyline. What are their impressions of how things have gone and how things go? Because they did a lot of talking, a lot of interviews, but until they got down here and got to really sink their teeth into baseball day in and day out with the big leagues but now what's going on down the street of the minor league side that to me is, is the focus what is their impression of how things have gone down here and that's why there haven't been a ton of moves made I think their approach was let's kind of wait soak it all in for a little bit and then maybe make some moves as the season if not the following offseason uh, comes up and a sidebar I suppose could be Young Ho Park yeah Young Ho Park's been really really good and what I've noticed too, Jim, is that he doesn't have the same flock of international media following him that he did a year ago this time. And Young Ho Park, if he if he had to go out and grab a sandwich, it was a big story. He had cameras, he had newspapers, just to just to go get a bite to eat. He has he has a small group following him, but not near the attention that that followed him at this time last year. And I think he likes that. I, I don't. I, it, that's got to be tough on a guy to have that just around you 24-7. We also learned he wasn't healthy last year. He had a wrist injury, needed surgery on his right hand. I think he's really healthy and maybe humbled based on uh, what he went through last year. Corey Provis is our guest here at Spring Training.